that time of the project where I need to clean the rear end and get some paint on it. It's pretty grimy. I'll use a scraper, scrape off the big chunks, and I'll use a variety of brushes, wire brush, brass brush, and nylon bristle brush. And I'll spray it all down with purple cleaner and scrub it with brushes and until I get it clean. You can see here that I'm well on the way to getting the rear end degreased. And while cleaning the rear end, I had covered all this yellow paint. And I thought, you know, that's an odd color to paint a rear end in a blue car. So I was curious if this was the original rear end, and if it was, what was the original gear ratio in it? I sanded the axle tube on the passenger side, and I found these codes stamped into the axle tube. Now, I've never been a numbers matching guy. All the hobby cars I've ever owned have been hot rotted to some degree. But I was curious just what this was. Talking to a friend who's a lot more knowledgeable about these things, he said I needed to get the casting numbers off the center section. You can see the center section is pretty grimy. So I had to do a bit of cleaning before I can uncover anything. I scraped the center section. I hosed it down with purple cleaner proceeded to scrub it with a bunch of brushes until I got most of the grease off and I could find the casting numbers. First thing I uncovered was this GM14 and I never did find out what that means. And so if you know, please leave a comment. The next thing I uncovered is this D224. Now apparently this means the center section was cast on April 22nd of 1974. So I thought, well, so far so good. Maybe it is the original rear end. You know, I'd have to check the cowl tag to see what the build date was on the car. I don't remember. And lastly, I uncovered this number, which according to everything I've found, means this rear end is for a Camaro. Now, would this rear end be installed in a Firebird? Because I think Camaros and Firebirds went down the same assembly line. So, I mean, it would kind of make sense to me that they would just use the same rear end. I mean, I don't know. Do you know? So, according to what I've found out, it looks like this is a 373 rear end out of a 74 Camaro. Because I think a rear end in a 74 Trans Am would be a 273, a 308, or a 342. So when I get a little further along with this, we'll pull the rear end cover off and we'll see what's inside. All right, I used a, used a lug nut to hold the drum on. So I move the rear end around and the drums don't come off. What do we got? That doesn't look too bad. It's not scored. Don't feel any deep grooves. So I could probably reuse it like it is after I clean it up. All right, it's a little grimy in there. Take off the front shoe, 
and then we'll take off the back assembly. And I got to probably have a little bit of a leaker here. That's okay because you got new got new wheel cylinders. I have a hell of a time getting these springs off. Yeah. One thing is they don't they don't go far. All right, that's pretty easy. So we got the front shoe. I'll just try to keep everything together here. Got the adjuster. And with the adjuster, there's a right hand on the left side of the car and a left hand adjuster on the right side of the car. Spring. Here's the parking brake lever. But we keep this whole keep this whole back shoe assembly in place. And if nothing else, it just makes it easier to remember how to put it back together. And I'm going to have to take this arm off with parking brake cables. I want to get that out. Just slide the spring back and on hooks. All right. It's pretty crusty. Definitely needs a rebuild. And 
the old wheel cylinder. Definitely time for a new one. Now get the parking brake cable out. And of course I have to clean the backing plate before uh, we install new brakes. Not a lot of magic to getting this parking brake cable out. Just try to squeeze these fingers closed until until they come out. Can definitely be a challenge. And once you get the fingers closed up enough to get that out, then it just slides out. And it's pretty grungy and it needs a really good cleaning. Well, I got the backing plate cleaned up pretty good. Used a, a wire brush and then a brass brush. And some sandpaper. And there's some pitting. Now one thing, it looks like looks like it's got some newer axle seals. So I'll try to be careful not to get those, get anything on those, any paint on those. I think I'm going to try to try to use this POR15 on this backing plate. <laughs> Don't leave PRO15 on the inside of the rim when you put the lid back on, because that might as well be welded on. So I'm probably going to have to cut the top and pour some out and uh, you know probably got a good third of a can in there so don't want to waste it but I'm going to use a I'm going to use a foam brush brush it on try to be careful and then once I get this side coated I'll go over to the other side sand that backing plate and coat it as well. Now the POR15 will give a nice hard finish to the inside of the backing plates. You know it's a little bit surprising that it cured so quickly. It's pretty cool in the garage. It's about 60 degrees. But it's been raining here lately so the humidity is pretty high. And I guess uh, humidity is what cures PRR15, so. so they're nice and hard. I can tape off the hole for the wheel cylinder and the parking brake cable, and I can sand the other side and keep the inside here pretty clean. So time to start sanding on the rest of the rear end and maybe get some paint on it. the rear end degreased and cleaned and yeah, what a mess took me took me two weeks to clean the rear end I was working on it you know two or three hours a day and I took a couple days off but it's done but uh dirty oh my miniature schnauzer max kept me company but if it got too noisy or too smelly, he'd bail on me. I have the rear end degreased. And I sanded it. First sanded it with 80 grit. Then sanded it with 120 grit. And I sanded the axle tubes 
with 220 grit in preparation for priming. So once I get all the dust blown off of it, I'll give it a quick wipe down and I'll spray it with primer. I have the rear end in primer. It's been cool and rainy, so I'm going to let the rear end sit up for a couple of days and let the primer harden before I move on to the painting stage. The primer coat looks pretty good. Looks like I got the rear end clean and I got a real nice coat of primer on it. So when I paint it, it should turn out pretty well. I'm getting ready to paint the rear end semi-flat black and I have it taped off. Try to get the overspray from getting on my red oxide primer. And I got it taped off as far as I think the overspray mist from a spray can might travel. After a certain distance it just turns to dust. But So, ready to get it painted. It seems like I've been cleaning on this rear end for forever. It's only been a couple weeks, but not the funnest job. But, just about done, you can get it painted. Well, the rear end's painted. Doesn't look too bad. Any spots I missed, when I get the rear end mounted on the springs, and I get, get these cross pieces out and the jack stands, I can touch it up as necessary. You can see all the grease down here in the in this cross piece. All that's from the rear end. It was a mess. It's good to have it done. It seemed like a bigger job than it than it was. You know, I took just a little over two weeks to get it cleaned up and painted, but it seemed like I worked on it forever. And it looks pretty good. Of course, the rear end cover is going to be replaced, so I didn't bother with that.
Well, the part on the lower left is the pinion snubber. That'll be going back in soon. The next thing I'm going to do is get in with some taps and chase all the threads. Make sure I don't have any primer in there. So when I start putting the parts back on, I'm not going to have any issues. I'm using these oversized half-inch U-bolts to bolt the rear end to the leaf springs. And uh, in order to use these, I had to drill out the leaf spring brackets. Well, after I chase the holes with some taps, I think I'm going to be able to start putting some parts back on the car. That'll be nice. Well, thank you for watching. And I hope you join me next time when we install the leaf springs in the car.